as well. Uh, we do have a moderator as of normal, and fortunately, Steve Brinzer is here and ready to go. He will tell you what the program entails and how he will be running things. Although most seats are uncontested, the school board are contested and, of course, selectmen. Now, I wanted to let you know that the Tuckenborough Association, for those who don't know, have been holding the uh, candidates night for well over 20 years, probably closer to uh, 30, although I can't get the records that far back. And we have been uh, an association that was formed back in 1965. So we've been very active, uh, not only for zoning, which was our primary effort, but uh, we did help uh, the town secure the 19 Mile Bay bypass. Uh, for those who don't know, 19 Mile Bay, the, the Route 109 used to run right along the bay in a similar way that it runs along 20 Mile Bay. And the town uh, needed some help with the DOT. And the records indicate that the Tuffman Borough Association stepped in and managed to get uh, virtually everybody in the town, or at least enough signatures, that end to end there was a 20 foot long sign up sheet that we were able to take to the state and say please go ahead and approve this. The state wetlands board did approve it and within two years that bypass was done. We've also inventoried uh, graveyards and cemeteries in town and put them all into a book. There are over 50 of them. Uh, the selectmen at one point in the early 90s asked the association to look into recycling effort at the uh, transfer station. And then uh, all along, we've been doing a lot of conservation effort. The Bentley Parkhurst property, the Chandler Conservant, uh, conservation easement, excuse me, and lately, the Great Meadows Trail, which the Conservation Commission has done quite well in uh, building not only bridges, but a trail to stay out of all of the water. I hope you get a chance to try it out. Our best known uh, activity is probably the Tufton Road Times four times a year, and I'm sure everybody gets one. At least there are 1,500 plus copies that are sent out uh, annually. Uh, then town-wide road cleanup, and then our last effort would be candidates night. And I'd like to highlight that we do operate solely off of donations. And for those who donate, thank you very much. Uh, we did start this year uh, a program where we signed up with Amazon for if you're familiar with their Smile program, smile.amazon.com. So we get a percent and a half off of every sale if you select the Tufton Borough Association. And I'll stress that that is money that comes out of Amazon's hide, not yours. So you don't pay any extra, you don't get any savings. Amazon would just donate it to us. So it would be an easy way for those of you who shop on Amazon to help support the uh, organization. I mentioned we are a uh, moderated uh, candidate's night, and fortunately Steve Brinzer is not only a very experienced moderator, but he is now going to be running for Town of Tuftonboro moderator at town meetings. Mm -hmm. So this is a good training ground for him and experience. And uh, Steve, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you for agreeing to moderate. Sure. Thank you. <coughs> Let's start off the meeting uh, this evening with a Pledge of Allegiance, so if you'll please stand and join me. The flag is in the corner. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like to keep this evening program fairly informal. I do have a couple uh, key points that I'd like to follow through with. First of all, please keep in mind this is not a, a forum or a debate. This is an opportunity for you voters to learn more about the candidates and for you candidates to tell the voters more about yourself, what your views are with respect to the town or the school board, school district and um, tell us a little bit about why you're seeking the position. For candidates in uncontested races, of which we have quite a few, I will simply introduce you and ask you to stand to be recognized. And the candidates in contested races, I'd like you to make some brief introductory comments and then we'll have a uh, question and answers 
session. That part of the program I'd like to keep to about 10 minutes inclusive of the questions and answers. To maintain order and to ensure that everyone can hear your question, those people who have questions in the audience, please wait until I've acknowledged you before speaking. Um, kind of like you know when you were in school, you had to put your hand up. And those questions, when you have questions, would you please state your name and where in town you live? And finally, in fairness to each of the candidates and to the audience, I'd like to limit each candidate to approximately 10 minutes, as I said. Thanks for your cooperation. <clears throat> Given that we have several people here for school board positions, um, we're gonna, I'll start with those positions so they can they don't need to stay to hear about Dr. Burrow at that point. And the order that I was given is for Effingham. We have two candidates. I'll do them alphabetically. So Jim Pittman would be the first person to speak. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. <laughs> Certainly. And by the way. Rather than for me to stand up here and keep checking my watch for the 10 minutes, I'm going to set this little timer. That doesn't mean you have to stop exactly at 10 minutes, but if you get to, if you hear this go off, it's time to wrap it up. I appreciate that. Okay. You know, I used to be in Toastmasters, and uh, you know, timing speeches is a big deal. Uh, thank you, everyone. It's uh, it's wonderful to be the first person up here, so I don't have to follow anybody. Um, I'm Jim Pittman. I am from Effingham, and I'm currently the Effingham rep on the. Uh, Governor Wentworth School Board, and I've been on the board only for a couple of years. I came in to uh, finish out the term for a person who moved out of Effingham so they can no longer uh, be on the board, and uh, then I was elected for a two-year term. Uh, I'm originally a Connecticut native. I moved up here uh, to Effingham 15 years ago, and uh, in the last year I retired. So, as is often the case for so many public servants, uh, we are, we are at a, a certain point in our lives where supposedly we have lots of extra time to devote to civic duties. Um, and of course, many of you will know what a big lie that is. But like, how did I ever do anything else at work? Um, now, school board, obviously imp important. Now, I am an Effingham candidate, so, you know, you have a, a great, uh, school board member and the uh, person of Jack Whitmer, who's, who's the chair, and I'm the vice chair uh, currently. Um, but interestingly, in a cooperative school district, all towns vote for the school board candidates, even if it's not their town. It's, a, it's an interesting system. So I appreciate the chance to get out in front of you, because otherwise you might have absolutely no idea who I am, unless you tune into the uh, ever exciting school board meetings that we have uh, every month. School board um, obviously uh, emphasizes the education and welfare of the children, uh, A number one, uh, but at the same time, it's a large organization. It's got a $58 million budget this year. It encompasses several towns. Uh, I've heard that it's the largest geographic school district in the state. Uh, thousands of people, thousands of students. Uh, it's, it's like a big company, really. And the, the board uh, has many, many, many activities. Uh, we've been almost a single issue board the last couple of years because you might have heard about that pandemic uh, that has uh, wound its way into pretty much everything that, that we've had to pay attention to. Hopefully we're coming to the end of that. I'm looking around and I'm seeing most people are not wearing face masks. What a wonderful thing. And, and th this is not a judgment on anybody one way or the other, but hopefully indicative of the fact that we're gonna move into at least an endemic phase of COVID, if not uh, hopefully see it go away entirely someday. Uh, in my time on the board, I've been on the finance committee. So there's the big money stuff. And also on the uh, building and maintenance. Uh, you may have heard that 70% uh, of the, the budget that we have uh, goes towards salary, benefits, things of that nature. It's a very labor-intensive uh, undertaking running a school district. Uh, obviously, we have teachers. Uh, we have transportation people. We have 
administrators, maintenance people, custodians. I mean, the list is pretty long. And it all, of course, costs money. Uh, in some of the uh, meetings I've been part of uh, in our town, um, people wonder, well, how come my taxes are so high? You know, how come the, the school district is wasting so much money? Can't you do things cheaper? And, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is uh, we, we cannot economize on our, our children's education. Um, nobody wants to pay more taxes than they need to. Um, but the fact of the matter is that, uh, again, being a very labor-intensive operation, it does cost money to have good people to provide good education. You may have heard that we have received money from the federal government from, via ESSER grants uh, for three years. This is out of the CARES Act, the COVID money. Uh, those dollars were earmarked by the federal government to be used in ways that were influenced by the, the COVID crisis that we had. Now, some of that was to deal with infrastructure things like uh, ventilation, HVAC systems in the schools, improving on those so that if, if we do have to respond to another uh, pandemic situation, uh, the environment is improved uh, for everyone who has to occupy those buildings. We've also hired temporary math teachers that were identified as an area of weakness and was negatively impacted by COVID. So each school got a, a math uh, teacher coordinator. They're temporary positions funded only by the, the, uh, the USER funds. Uh, they will not necessarily go on after the monies have been spent, but being used as a instrument to hopefully mitigate some of the shortfalls that we've seen in student performance. I'd like to be on the board for another three years, hopefully. Um, I have a fine um, opponent, if I can use the word, uh, who you'll hear from next. Um, I think if you vote for me or if you vote for Nate, either way you're going to have a great candidate to go on the board. But obviously I'm a little biased. I'm hoping that your vote come my way and I'll get to continue to do some work with the board. I'd be happy to take you, questions. Jim. Any questions for Jim? having me tonight. <clears throat> Appreciate the opportunity to come over here uh, to talk to you off uh, folks. So my name is Nate Williams. I uh, currently reside in Effingham, but I've kind of lived uh, a little bit everywhere in the district. Actually, my mother used to be the minister up at the Methodist Church uh, years ago when I was just a, just a wee little baby. So I probably don't remember much time there because I was probably two or three. But um, <clears throat> so I've lived in the district uh, my whole life um, from Effingham, and I have a, t a daughter in the Effingham School District. And uh, over the last year during COVID, I've really found how important education is um, for you know, in the student uh, student teacher relationship um, is with the uh, with the students and how much we've lost you know with it with the children. So <clears throat> as, a, as a parent, I wanted to get involved, and uh, you know as a young person, I want to get involved. Obviously, uh, my dad and my sister are both teachers, and they say that the best parents are the ones that are involved. So I want to be an involved parent um, in my daughter's education, and I want to try to help the community as well because. Um, I'm also a firefighter. I've been on the fire department in Center Osby for 18 years, moving from the um, you know, firefighter up to deputy chief now. So I have um, some civic, you know, some civ I've done some civic duty there. Um, you know, working together, dedication, teamwork. Um, you know, budgets. My my full-time job. I'm a mechanical engineer. 
So I can, uh, you know, I know the value of a good education, um, you know, fit, uh, how to, you know, make timelines and, you know, fiscal budgets and, and make things work. Um, so I think those are pretty valuable uh, for, for the job uh, at hand. I've also, um, recently I joined uh, with Jim on the, on the uh, zoning board in my town because I want to be involved as a community member because um, I'm only 36 and I think, it, you know, I'm trying to instill my, my kids, you know, to be involved because I feel like, you know, like you have multiple candidates that, you know, multiple positions that aren't even, you know, nobody's running against, right? So if we don't start to instill that in our, our kids, you know, I think it'll be, it's hard, you know, there's nobody to fill that position. So I think community is huge, especially in a small town like, like Effingham. So, um, and this year actually I had the opportunity um, because I'm an engineer and I, I believe that, you know, STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math is very important for kids. I actually started a uh, first robotics legal league at my daughter's school. Um, Using some of the some of the state grants that was available during COVID, so that was really good. It was a good eye opening for me because I was able to get into the district, get into the school with the kids, and, and really understand and see how how much they want to be there, how much they want to learn, and and you know how devastating you know COVID was and the hybrid model and all that stuff on them. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm here. Um, I'll be a fresh candidate. I've never run the school board before, but I'm definitely passionate about um, being there for the kids. You know, as a parent because. One, I'm a parent, two, I'm a taxpayer, and you know, I want the best for my kid and, and the education for him, so. Any uh, questions? It's not proud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is your Moving right along. We have two candidates tonight for a member at large. Uh, and first up, sorry, but we, I'm just doing it alphabetically, so it's, it's the simplest way to do it. Uh, and Brody DeShane is here first, so uh, let's have a look him to say. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Well, good evening, everyone. It's great to meet all of you. Um, you regularly come out to Tuftamara. I visit a Tuftamara board of selectmen meeting because uh, if I run for re-election, which I plan on for state representative, um, hopefully you guys will give me the honor of being, um, you know, you guys will be my constituents and I will be your state representative. I have a rule as a state representative. I get back to everyone within 48 hours. You can ask anyone in Wolfboro. I've never broken that, right? I pride myself on being accessible. But, um, and you know, I'm running for school board member at large in the Governor Wentworth Regional School District. And I may be young, but I do not lack experience. Um, I served on the school board actually as a non-voting member in 2016 to 2017. And I have previous experience on the board and working relationships with current board members, with administrators, with principals, with staff, right? With parents and with children, right? I previously worked for uh, Wolfboro Parks and Recreation, so I understand um, you know, the needs of children too, right? And I have some basic training in that. I currently serve as one of Wolfboro's two state representatives, as I previously mentioned. As a state representative, I'm clerk of the county delegation, making me third in the line of command at a county convention. The Carroll County Delegation is our county's budget committee, consisting of the county's 15 state representatives. We approve of all Carroll County spending to help formulate an operating budget. Also down in Concord, I'm on the state and federal relations and veterans affairs committee. The speaker of the New Hampshire House would be appointing me to a second committee, the legislative administration committee. This is a testament to the hard work that I do for the people in our community. As a former student in the district, I have a passion for improving and perfecting our public education. Someday, I plan on raising a family in the Governor Wentworth community. And fingers crossed, I'm right now working on a purchase and sales agreement to buy land in the town of Tuftonboro. So that's exciting. I'm, you know, I'm hoping it goes through this week. We've been really negotiating. But um, aside from that fact, I want to see our schools succeed and continue to improve. I think we're on the right track now that the pandemic's over. I think. People want hope, they want inspiration, they want to move forward, right? They want to see the learning loss that's happened, they want to see us reverse that and not only make it back to our previous educational attainment, but keep improving. I want to give back to the community in the district that's given me so much in my life as someone who went to Kingswood Regional High School, Kingswood Regional Middle School, Crescent Lake, and Carpenter Elementary. My father was a teacher, so I understand the struggles that teachers go through um, every day. Uh, I'd have five overarching goals as your school board member at large, right? I want to keep healthy students in school and keep students in school healthy. I support the board's recent vote to unmask our community's children safely. I support the state's recent decision. I think it's 
you know, we're ready, we're safe, we have, we have the tools to mitigate it as, on a personal level, and we continue moving forward safely with in-person learning. I want to improve curriculum and educational outcomes. That should be an ultimate, utmost goal of any member running for the school board. We need to look at what New Hampshire's top schools do to improve their test scores and educational uh, performance, and we need to promote these best practices. We don't need to reinvent the wheel, right? Other people are already doing it well. You know, we need school board members who are willing to reach out to the Department of Education, which I have working relationships in the, with the Department of Education and people in that department. And we need to reach out to the school districts that are some of the best rated in the state. We need to ask them, what are you guys doing? Right? How can we in Governor Wentworth Regional School District bring those practices into us? We also need to address learning loss, right? As uh, Jim Pittman uh, ably noted, you know, these ESSER funds from the federal government, um, the, uh, the elementary and secondary school relief emergency funds, those are going to be huge to helping us address with learning loss. We need to formulate, you know, the final stage of that, uh, of that federal funding, right, to make sure that we're addressing learning loss, we're finding ways to get kids learning with teachers in person, right, that we can get more tutoring opportunities for families that want to utilize it, that we're able to figure out innovative ways to address that, right. For people who have children in the school district or grandchildren in the school district, I could understand, you know, you want your children to have the best opportunity in the future, and, you know, addressing learning loss is one way to do that. We need to promote fiscal restraint and reasonable spending. Our school district tends to do this well, but we need school board members who will continue being frugal. I have a proven record of fiscal responsibility in the state legislature and county convention. I am the only candidate in this race who has cut property taxes, right? Tufton Borough, because of your able and wonderful board of selectmen, because of your state legislators, you will see your property tax rate decrease. And that's a wonderful thing to see. I will continue to defend taxpayers from wasteful and frivolous spending. Four, I want to improve dialogue with parents and teachers and solicit more feedback. I firmly believe we should increase the number of surveys we send to families. This provides the school board with a better idea of how parents and students feel about specific policies. We should also create a joint committees with school board members, teachers, and parents to improve schools, curriculum, and pandemic response. We also need a plan for dealing with teacher burnout that focuses us on promoting better mental health and worker retention. Five, improving school meal nutrition and allowing students all the time to eat. I've been working as a state representative on this issue, but we can do more locally to address this pertinent problem. So again, I'm Brody Deshaies. I'm running for school board at large in the Governor Wentworth Regional School District, and I'd appreciate your support on March 8th. And I'll take any questions. Yeah, Carol. Uh, you mentioned that you were a non-voting member of the school board. Yes, I was a non-voting member. Could you elaborate on that position? I was a, I was a student. I was a student member. Yeah, so when oh, I was a senior. A yeah, I know, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Got it. But. Okay. Thank you. So, Bonnie. Hi, Brody. Hi, Bonnie. Uh, can you tell us what your position is on book banning? On um, book banning? Banning. Um, in what respect, as in, I don't think the school board currently, I think so, here's my opinion. The school board needs to look at a way at making it so then that we can have accessibility for the public to understand what's being taught in the classroom, what kind of books are in our library. Right? We need to have a specific policy for what books that you know the public thinks are permissible and what books are needed in the classroom and what books aren't. And I believe we do have some policies on the books and it's something that we may need to address, but I think that's why we need to have a joint committee with administrators, teachers, and parents, you know, and hopefully we can get our PTOs going again, because that's been a big issue across the district, right? Our PTOs have been fairly dormant. And so we need to bring everyone together and try to make a you know a comprehensive plan for how we're going to address what's taught in the classroom and what isn't taught in the classroom. We need it to be really directed in a professional way. So I wouldn't be able to have the perfect answer for what policy would I create on day one, right? But I know we can find the resources and the people and the passionate parents and the teachers who are teaching in our schools to be able to address this issue and to make it so that every stakeholder is considered and that we have a strong, robust curriculum. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one for you, Jim. Yeah, of course. Do you see any conflict between your role in the state legislature and on the school board? I, no, I wouldn't say so. I'd say actually it's an asset. I'd say it's an asset to be able to have those relationships with, with the Department of Education, to be able to pick up the phone and call someone like Senator Bradley or Executive Counselor Kenny, or even you know knowing people in Governor Sununu's office, right? to be able to get those resources, be able to get that help. I think it's a huge asset. I think it's very normal across the state to have people who serve on local boards and commissions and also in state government. I mean, even our uh, other state representative in the town of Wolfboro, John McDonald, has been chairman of the uh, budget committee 
for 30 years and how he works on the state budget and votes on the state budget and how he, um, how he budgets in the town of Wolfboro, they're symbiotic, right? He gets to see both lenses, one through a local lens and one through a state lens. And I think it'd be a great asset to have someone on the school board who's looking at education and the funding aspect from the state end, but also look at it from the local end, right? Sometimes the state doesn't do the best job of respecting property taxpayers, right? And I understand that, and I want to keep continuing and fighting for that down in Concord, trying to find ways to make it so then you guys aren't all bearing that brunt and that burden. And I think a huge thing would be being on the school board too, ensuring that you know that we're responsible with those tax dollars that we get from the state, and responsible with those dollars that um, that we collect from local property taxes. Yeah. Have you been going to the school board meetings recently or in the past couple of years? I've, I've always watched it, almost every single one, right? And so they're obviously televised. Um, I go to some in person and I go some online, but I've kept up regularly. I have a working relationship with the chairman, your current board member, who's going to be on the ballot on a post, Jack Whitmer from Tufkin Borough. And um, I, think that's a, uh, I think that's a huge asset, to be able to get into government with actual plans, with um, having been elected and being tested, having a proven record, and being able to get in there and collaborate with others, right? That's a huge thing, right? We need to be building bridges right now. We need to make sure that we're bringing everyone to the table, parents, teachers, um, you know, even if we can have students from the high school, you know, being in on some of these discussions too, if they can and in a professional and respectful way, and bring everyone together and really figure out how are we gonna move forward after COVID? How are we gonna do it in a positive way? And how are we gonna build hope in our community, Governor Wentworth Regional School District, when only about 30% of our students are at grade level, right? That's a huge issue, and that should be the biggest concern for everyone in this district, in this community, and that should be the biggest goal of the next school board member, is how are we gonna bring people together to solve that massive problem and really handle that undertaking? Any other questions? Thank you, board. Thank you. And I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for your time. The other candidate for member at large is Jessica Williams. <clears throat> Lady. I graduated also from Kingswood Regional High School just in 1999, so a few years before Brody. Um, after high school, I moved to New York City, moved to Boston, went to college, came back, and took over my family's business, where I have been for 18 years now. Um, I own a hearing health care practice in Wolfboro. Many of you may know me. Um, I've learned via trial and error, running my own business, what it takes, what, what money really matters, what finan how finances are really important. Um, I work mostly in private practice. Uh, I've also provided consulting services to a multi-hospital system to provide an audit and implement protocols in the audiology department. Part of this consulting work included negotiating with vendors to procure and install diagnostic equipment. Aside from my professional career, I have served on several boards. I was appointed by both governors Maggie Hassan and Chris Sununu, and I've served two terms on my state professional board, the New Hampshire site, uh, the New Hampshire Board of Hearing Care Providers. This is a regulatory board for audiologists, speech pathologists, and hearing instrument specialists. I also served, <clears throat> excuse me, the town of Ossipee as a commissioner uh, for the New Hampshire Department of Edu uh, Transportation um, for the Ossipee Bridges Project. So uh, I was part of that. Uh, both of these positions gave me experience regarding proper board protocol uh, and training in ethics uh, and how to represent the public. I have testified in both in front of both the New Hampshire Senate and House of Representatives regarding a bill sponsored by our local Senator Jeff Bradley. Uh, this is regarding public water access in New Hampshire. The reason I'm here today is because of my mother. My daughter is a senior at Kingswood Regional High School and will be headed to nursing school in August. She is also the student representative, as Brody was, um, on the Governor Wentworth Regional School District School Board, so she's a non-voting member. My son will be a high school student in the fall, and I homeschooled him when Governor Wentworth Regional School District was running their hybrid in-person remote learning from September 2020 until April 2021. I was appalled at what he didn't know, and I blamed myself, and I felt a deep sense of guilt. How could I have missed? He's had an IEP for reading for years, but the curriculum I purchased at my own expense was beyond his skill level, and we had a lot of catching up to do. 
In seven months, he brought his test scores up by 40 points, which was above, av which was above average compared to his below average test scores from previous years. This is why I'm here. I've been a very vocal critic of our district's handling of COVID protocols for our children, which is how you may know me. I've attended and participated in nearly every school board meeting, whether remote or in person since March 2020. I have taken my own time to familiarize myself with, the educa with education law, curriculum, and our state assessments. I have discussed these assessments with the curriculum director, Katie Hills. I have been deeply disappointed to see our current board spend more time discussing snow days instead of the current state of our children's education. As taxpayers in this town, 58% of your property tax bill goes to educating our youth. You may be interested to know that 65% of Tufton Borough Central School sixth graders are below proficient in math, and 59% are below proficient in reading. We are failing our children. What is the solution? This is where I think my strengths will shine. I'm a realist and a natural problem solver. I know the solution is a huge undertaking, and I have no illusions it can be accomplished in a single term on the school board. Many of our problems in education are systemic, socioeconomically and politically, but I would like to focus on what we can do. First, we need to identify problems and goals. We need to bring together parents, students, teachers, support staff, to establish a realistic roadmap to success, but how? We need to collect and leverage data to give us valuable insights. This is a very low cost way to data-driven insights to determine where we are at and where we're going. Software such as Tableau and Mainstay could be used to track assessments and engage students and parents. It isn't enough to rely on standardized testing to create goals. <coughs> we need to make our goals smaller and more actionable. As a busy mother, I would like a simple way to engage in my children's school life, and as a taxpayer, I would like transparency and accountability from my public servants. This is why I built a website called gwrsd.com. You can check it out when you get home, and you can go to the tab that says gwrsd dash. This is the framework of a resource that I have envisioned, which can serve to provide transparency for grade level curriculum, class and teacher reviews, events, assessments, and forthcoming district data, and financial audits and budget information. Among other things, excuse me, building out this website need not be costly, and if elected to this position, I will be contributing my entire $3,000 annual salary to keeping this resource up to date for the public. Beyond that, the district has an additional $10.6 million in federal funds it must spend before 2024 to address learning loss infrastructure projects, and there are links on the website I mentioned above if you want to read more. I also want to mention that we cannot blame all of our learning loss on COVID. The trend in below proficiencies in our school districts happened far before 2020. The problem, throwing more money is not the solution. We need to come up with a solid plan, so it's not enough to just have ideas. We need to have somebody that understands how a project works, starting from the top, realizing your goals, and going down for each piece and making sure the right people are put in the right jobs. So that's the lady, that's, I'm the lady for the job for that because I love projects. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm available for discussion. You're welcome to join my email list and contact me via the website and I'll respond promptly. Thank you for your time today and I hope to earn your vote. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Yes, sir. I'm just curious, both of you yes. already mentioned these proficiency metrics. Are, are you, you, is that compared to, say, a statewide <coughs> bar you're both using as a comparison or are you using a national metric? I, I was curious how this school district may be compared to districts in neighboring New England states or perhaps even uh, neighboring counties. Yes, did everyone hear the question? Okay. Um, so the, the, every year, certain grades are given a state assessment. And then those state assessments are, um, they're benchmarked against other New Hampshire towns and then um, other, the, the, by the entire state and, the, and nationally. So there are, nation, there are standardized tests that are benchmarked against other towns and other states. So yes. 
So what's the answer? The answer is these, these tests are based on the, the state assessment. So you take the entire state scores and you're comparing against those state scores. I see. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me what your position is on book banning? Yes, I would be happy to answer that question. Um, I do not believe in censorship, personally. Um, however, I think it is highly inappropriate um, for there to be materials in our schools that are hypersexual, ultraviolent, um, or extremists. So I think that there should be some limitation, especially based on age group, um, what information is given to our students. So um, there would be some books, if my children came home with them, that I've seen in our school libraries that are pornographic in nature, for instance, and I would not agree that that should be something my child is uh, exposed to at their school, especially. So I don't believe in book burning um, and, and book banning necessarily, um, unless it was something really off base that you know, I'm not going to be opposed to a certain book about race or about politics, but something that's maybe on the edge of dangerous. Um, yes, I would say that's not okay. Do you have some titles that you think are inappropriate that you've seen in the schools? I don't have any titles in the, the top of my, my mind right now, so no, I don't. I'm a fairly open-minded person about um, allowing my children to be exposed to a wide variety of things. For instance, I took my children to Auschwitz and brought them there, and I thought that was important, uh, devastating, but important. So I'm pretty open-minded about that sort of thing. Thank you. All right, thank you. So moving on, if the school board candidates would like to leave, that's okay. Or are you welcome to stay? I'm here for the long time. I love this stuff. All right, uh, what I'd like to do next is move along to the, can to the positions in town who are running, where the individuals running unopposed. And uh, at least ask the individuals mm -hmm. to stand and be recognized. Since I'm standing, I'm running for moderator, so that it's the first on the list. We also have uh, supervisor of the checklist, and Marianne's not here tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Marianne Marcuson. We have for the budget committee, Jeffrey, and I should have caught up with him earlier, Jordan. Reisner? I don't know this gentleman. Well, I understand it. It's not here, no, okay. Reisner, yes, very easy. And the write in candidate, David ba Dauphinase. Okay, please say it, Dave. Dauphine is the last name. If you, <laughs> if you need help with that, I have cards. I can, a few anyway, that I could give you if you need help spelling that. Trustee of the trust funds is uh, Chris. Chris Sawyer, uh, cemetery trustee Carol Bush, thank you, and library trustee Gordon Hunt. Good evening. Very good. All right, moving on to selectmen, the only contested race in our town <coughs> this year. Um, and again, alphabetically, I'll start off with Bob Murray. <coughs> Good evening, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, a little bit about myself. I moved to Tuftonboro. I followed my wife's family. My wife's family is from Tuftonboro, and uh, I moved here when I was 29 years old, 1993. Started my own plumbing, heating, and air conditioning business. Uh, raised three daughters in town. Uh, they're all grown up now. I have grandchildren now who are in the school system. Uh, Tuftonboro is a very, very important town to me. It's become my home. Uh, yeah, I'm glad I'm from Massachusetts. I consider myself an escapee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this, this, this town I've found home. I love the people. The people have uh, embraced me. I've embraced the town. Um, I've, I've met, I met a man, uh, former selectman, Norm Bidham. Some of you may know Norm Bidham. Uh, took a liking to me and uh, got me involved in town politics. And, uh, and I found it very important that, um, you know, people need to contribute back to the community. So uh, he invited me to, 
do certain other positions in town that I, I didn't accept because I was busy at the time running my own business and certain conflicts of interest. Uh, but finally, I accepted a position on the Tufton Borough Zoning Board in uh, 1997. I served on the Tufton Borough Zoning Board for 17 years. I chaired it for 15 years. Uh, I got to know quite a few of you folks here tonight. Um, I ran my business for 18 years. 18 years. It was, it was a good business. I was very successful, but certain life changes, uh, I needed to scale things down. And uh, I took a job at the county complex. I'm the director of maintenance at the county complex. I work with uh, the delegation uh, working on budget. I run my own $2 million budget out of the $40 million budget. Um, I think I do a fairly good job running that budget. Uh, I am all about conservancy, fiscal conservancy. Uh, I don't, I don't waste any money. Any money that we spend, it's responsible spending. It's something that's needed, not something that's necessarily wanted. Uh, and I'd like to take the experience that I have running my business and the work at the county, and bring it to the Tufton Borough Board of Selectmen and to the taxpayers of Tufton Borough. Um, we've got a police station coming up, but I'm very concerned about uh, the costs of this police station. Um, uh, uh, construction and f building facilities are in my wheelhouse, and uh, I'd like to be part of that process, seeing this police station go forward. Uh, I do support the Tufton Borough Police, I support the police station, but I'm very concerned about uh, these upcoming costs that we're all gonna have to pay. I'd like to see it done right and uh, done responsibly. Um, here I am. I appreciate your vote, and uh, if you have any questions, please. Jill Brownhall, Ellen Village. Um, so, do you oppose or um, are you for the Warren article spending more money on the police station? <clears throat> um, <laughs> I supported the police station. Um, I support the police station. I, 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 I have a hard time spending this extra money. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to vote for the, for the extra $468,000. Um, I believe it can be done for the money that we've already budgeted. Um, I think that the architect uh, has done a fine job. Um, coming up with these set of plans, but I think that there is some uh, square footage that um, frankly is not needed. I think we can do this building for less money, and I think we can give the police department what they need um, with a little bit less. Yeah, Bob. Bob McCorton, Elton Village. Bob, given your comments about the station and the cost, um, do you intend to bring forward any kind of an amendment that might get it more in line with what you believe would be needed? No, I think there's plenty of opportunity for the taxpayers to um, to, to voice that concern and uh, bring things like that uh, <coughs> cost-cutting measures forward. Um, if the taxpayers vote for the money, I'm going to make sure that it's spent responsibly. And uh, if they don't for it, I'm still going to make sure that the money that has been voted for is spent responsibly. If we have to, if we have to kick this can down the road again another year, then uh, so be it. But I don't think that we need to spend two and a half million dollars on this. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, Joe. Can't keep quiet. Sorry, <laughs> Bob. Uh, we're at the budget committee, and every once in a while. I put my two cents in, hopefully to incite people to stand up and speak. And I have a problem with some of the warrant articles and the words that are in them. And one of the ones that Guy Pike had brought up about the police cruises. Uh, number one, I don't know how many cops we have today. Number two, instead of spending $80,000 on a vehicle where you could split the cost 40000 a piece and repair the other ones, seems to be more sensible but that's not the way it's worded in the warrant article for that one and i guess you sat there did you have an opinion other than you know there was no discussion other than well the way it's worded i said gee it gives the selectmen 
you know, Cod Block and uh, Chip stepped in, but do you have an opinion? When I go to the delegation to look for money for my projects at the, uh, at the county, I need to justify my spending. And my spending is looked at very carefully. It's not always agreed with. Um, I don't always get what I want. Uh, we have a police chief that runs the police department. And if he justifies his expenses, then, then the selectmen as a board uh, can choose to approve or deny those expenses as long as they're justified. I'm for responsible spending. <coughs> if, uh, if, in this case, if the police chief can justify that it's a, it's a valid um, expense, and he's justified it. If it's just a want, it warrants further discussion. I don't want to put you on the spot, but your overall opinion of the budget committee, which only eight people showed up, uh, were you for or against it? You have reservations? You have other opinions? I think the budget committee does a very good job oh. of putting a budget together. Yeah, that's right, exactly. I'm just talking about the expenses that were in it. That's all. Okay, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. This is a question for anyone in your running for your position, but you're up here, so I'll ask you. Um, the police station being built, obviously it's going to be built bigger because they're having space issues down the street here, being in the town hall and whatnot. Does that mean that they're planning on filling more positions as more police officers? I didn't know if you might know the answer for that because I grew up in Wolfboro where we have I, in my opinion, too many police officers. And they hide around corners and they're always in sketchy spots and trying to get people. Of course, everyone should drive the speed limit, but. Wolfboro's <laughs> nice because you just get to drive home and not deal with all that and don't feel like you're being targeted. So I didn't know if there was any plans that you might know of, of hiring more police officers to fill a bigger station. I'm pretty sure that. Uh Selectman can uh, help me out with this. I'm pretty sure that uh, the, the chief wanted to hire another officer this year and it was uh, rejected. That was not approved. That was not approved. Do you know how many people or officers are on a part before the time of Murrow? Including the chief, there are yeah. four. Four, okay. Great people, by the way. I like them. <laughs> so I've sure. never had a run in with them, so <laughs> <laughs> I agree. They're good. <laughs> good. No, no. Chief's not here. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. And the other candidate for selectman is Lloyd Wood. Well, I see a lot of friendly faces. How are you all doing tonight? Someone asked me about a year ago, how long have you lived in Tuftaburg all your life? And I said, not yet. <laughs> um, I have a couple opening comments. I call them the three E's. What do I bring to the table? Education uh, and public administration. Uh, I probably have taken about 40 hours of some type of course every year since my uh, master's degree. It might be an EMT course with the fire department. It might be a, a course on uh, basic budgeting. Uh, why would we go by? Uh, next is experience. I've been a department head when I was at the University of New Hampshire. We were on a biannual budget during the Carter days, for you that are old enough to remember. In January, you did your budget to be accepted by the state in June to start that next September. Who would guess that 18 months into it, the price of gas under the Carter administration, and that's not a slam in Carter, would go up $2 to the point where we had uh, you know, 10 gallons per day per vehicle at the university. Um, I've been on the, was on the budget committee and was chairman. Uh, I've served on a number of committees uh, uh, with the town, CIP, Budget Committee, Conservation, and most recently, Recreation Commission. And I also have been a selectman here in town. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a product of the community, went to the local uh, uh, 
private schools. Uh, the next E is effort. I'm willing to listen. I'm willing to read up on the material you give me. I'm, re I'm ready to uh, study the issues. And if you ask me a question, I'll try to answer what I think is appropriate or what I have found is, is legal. Uh, there are some things that we just absolutely have to do. Uh, I respect others, and it's great to, for us to have uh, as many candidates as we have. Uh, tell you what, anybody have any questions? Go ahead, sir. I'd also like to hear your opinion on the, uh, the matter of the police station. Uh, I've been involved in building four public safety buildings. The last one was a million dollars. I'm concerned about the cost. I'm trying to build a garage, and the price has gone up 70, 80 percent. So uh, I understand that. But one thing that con concerns me is, is, is it going to be three-phase power? Three-phase power means another $600 a month just for, for meter. I look at the, the fire station. Um, and we had to have the latest technology there. And I'm a member of the fire department. The chief knows I'm gonna say this. I listened to the guys that come from almost out of state to work on that because we had to have an engineered in the future system that had two or three or four functions. And there's no serial numbers on parts. They don't know where, where some of these things are. So I asked uh, a number of months ago to come over and I asked Dennis, will you show me the furnace? This is a 9,000 square foot uh, uh, building. And the furnace is the size of a dishwasher, actually a little smaller. Now, I haven't read the latest proposals. I'd be glad to go over them. Maybe, maybe uh, there's been some changes there. I don't know. But I'm prepared to uh, look at that. Uh, you know, KISS, keep it simple. There's another word there. So that's my position there. Now, I was a member of the um, last committee that designed that police station. And it had a builder on it. It had someone from 911. It had an uh, engineer, a contractor. And they designed it to be the this building function moved across the street to build it here and add a, a sally port or to put it someplace else read that report, it's an A1 report. And from the chief who made uh, it different departments available to the people that went out and talked, it was an excellent, excellent committee. Uh, the current uh, current station meets the needs, meets some future needs. Um, if you go by the International Association Chiefs of Police Manual, the IACP, you know, a bathroom has to be certain dimensions. Uh, you need so much room for an officer uh, for him to change clothes and a locker room and, and all that. And simple little things like evidence and lost and found. And, uh, you know, there are rules and regulations. For example, when they take a blood test or a breath sample, it can't, like years ago, just stick it in your refrigerator at home. <laughs> you now have to have a refrigerator that's secure. And it just drives your our costs up as taxpayers. Um, did, did that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, the bottom line is on any issue, it's what the people, when they say yes, you do it. And when they say no, you don't do it. It's really rather simple. And if you look at the, my past record, it is the warrant articles, uh, the guidelines that we have selected go by. I hope I answered your question. Do you know the family that donated that land to the town of Thompson Borough where the fire department is? And is that where the police department's going to go? No. Is the the, the, um, the uh, land was purchased where the uh, fire station is by the Nickerson Gould family. Uh, one of the brothers was a classmate that Susie's in and mine. Uh, there's about 80 or 88 acres somewhere in, in there. Uh, the nice thing about uh, Central Station is uh, fire truck that was kept by many, many years at uh, Winter Circle Farm worked out well with the other two substations that were built many years ago. Because if you have a, fire, a Class A pumper within so, I think it's five aeronautical miles, 
you save a little bit on your fire insurance. That had to change and that was made possible. And Chief Adam Thompson and a couple of other people just worked year after year on it, almost every weekend going through the but it was purchased land. Uh, it was purchased? Yes. I heard it was donated for recreational purposes. Uh, but that was, might be a, a rumor. Right. It was supposed to be used for recreational right. purposes. It was actually a classmate of mine was part of the family that lived there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I just uh, Lee, Lee Gould was the one that was in my brother Bob's class. And they actually had a conversation about it, but uh, it certainly has worked out well. Yeah, uh, the fire department's great. Yeah. I have one more question about it. Um, uh, this land here was purchased originally uh, by the town, the Dearborn property it was also purchased by the town at another time, whether the library went there or public safety or mm -hmm. one police stations. So, um, go ahead. Is it, is it true that they now need to add another entrance into the fire department because of access for in an emergency for the fire trucks to leave. I heard that they had an issue with only having one entrance coming in and out. They had uh, two legally by the. Okay. I just didn't know if you knew about that. There well, it, what, is it a legal issue? First of all, the state of New Hampshire says you can't have too many entrances. But they do allow, and there's a formula, any public safety International fire chiefs and the international police chiefs recommend that you have an entrance and an exit. One gets blocked off, right. you, you go the other way. The other thing, think about the school, the transfer station. Sure. Jim Bean and his his uh, plow trucks, every other pass by, come in, plow the snow away from the building. Now, if a, there's a fire, guess what? The ladder truck from Wolfboro can get in. They can't go through 12 inches of snow or, or, or whatever. So it's my understanding that there's a um, there is land available. There's an entrance right away that's available now. Whether that will happen next year or, or down the, the the line, it's whatever the people are willing to pay. Sure. The, the, guy, the guy to talk to is Adam Thompson, the fire chief. He's very approachable. Uh, I think you'd enjoy talking with him. And no, feel free to give you his pin, your opinion too. Sure. <laughs> He's that type of guy. He's responsive. Did that answer your question? Yeah. No, I think it's great that they're gonna pull one in. I just didn't know why it wasn't put in originally. If well, was, the same reason. Was missed, the like, same reason why two overhead doors weren't, and the right. same reason why the building was cut, turned uh, 90 degrees, you know, to save some money, and why the fourth bay wasn't wasn't put in. It was and, a money thing. And, and and you know what? That's what the committee who built it. That was with the chief and the people who worked up, uh, with him on it, and that's what the town wanted, and and it certainly has benefited the town. Yeah, it's a good piece. Sure, it, it has worked out for everybody. I hope that answers your question. Sure. F feel feel free. I volunteer you to go down and uh, see Adam Thompson and tell him I sent you. Anybody have any other questions? We won't cut it right in a second, but if there are no more questions, thank you, Lloyd. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, do you have any closing comments? I just want to thank the candidates, all of them, for their willingness to serve and for coming here tonight, and all the other residents of town and uh, outside of town for coming. Please drive safe and uh, hope we don't get too much snow next uh, 24 hours. But thank you all for coming. Please go to Mark. <laughs> Thank you.